Hey, I'm Brendan Moran. I'm here at the Calicraft Brewery at the Shadelands, Walnut Creek's very own craft brewery. I'm gonna meet the guy behind it and maybe get a tasting or two. So come on. I'm here with Blaine Landberg. He is the owner of Calicraft Brewery and we are gonna get a little tasting today. Let's do it. But first I wanna to talk to you about just the brewery. Sure. Tell me about how long you guys have been here, what you have, stuff like that. Yeah, so we've been we've been in the Shadelands now for four and a half years, really. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've been working with the city of Walnut Creek now for four, literally four and a half years. You gotta be able to open up the tap room here, put a small R&D facility over it, uh, across from this wall right here, and then uh, open up the space for the public. So we do a bunch of different things uh, in terms of beer. One thing that we really focus on is innovating beer. Mm -hmm. uh, but then also from a taproom perspective, making sure that we kind of give people also what they want in terms of light beers, hoppy beers, those sorts of things. So how'd you get into doing this? Well, I started with a passion for, you know, crafting great beverages and really also about beer. And so it literally this, the first week after I moved out of my house, I was 19 years old. I went to school at Berkeley. Uh, and brewed my first batch of beer in my dorm at UC Berkeley, hence the way you're about ready to taste a beer called Berserkly. I thought I was a wizard because it had like 7% alcohol and <laughs> it fermented and it tasted good and I was 19 in a college dorm room and that's pretty much heaven. Well, can I try it? Yeah, for sure. I, right. I, I actually recommend we go Coast first, finish with Berserkly as the finale. So if you want to try Cali Coast, All right. uh, that's the one in the middle there. So this is a Kolsch style ale, which is similar to a Pils, but it's got more flavor. We use California grown malt that comes on the northern side of Mount Shasta, mm -hmm. super great uh, malt growing region. Uh, and we ferment it with a coal sheet strain. So it's gonna have a touch of fruit, but really tastes like a pill, so. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Nice, light, refreshing. I call it my daddy beer. Why is that? Because I could have a couple of those and still be a good dad. <laughs> right? Only 4.8%, and especially in a place that's kid friendly, you know. You wanna make sure you have some for the dads. Let's talk about that. Yeah. The way this is designed, um, you can tell that if you're really into beer, yep. you'll feel at home here. Absolutely. But you've got the whole outside section too, right? That's right. So I, what I really want to do was integrate the notion of kind of urban and sustainable with kind of sub suburban and casual, right? How do you do that? And so really when you come inside, we're all about the beer. In fact, all these staves here are from barrels, uh, really whiskey and rind mostly, mm -hmm. and rum that we actually aged beer in and we reused them. Uh, and we wanted the space in here to feel like, hey, if you want to get geeky and you want to talk about beer, let's get geeky and talk about beer. Mm -hmm. We have 12 different beers on tap. But then on the outside, we want to also, if you have kids, I have three kids, right? I wanted you to have a place where you could let your kids run, yeah. right? And you let your kids kind of be. And so we wanted to have this really nice outside space that really kind of felt almost more picnic-y and communal. And because one of the things that I really felt that Shadelands needed was a space, a community space. And it's great to see kind of Shadelands really kind of transforming into that. And so we wanted to be one of the first kind of nodes and points for people to kind of come, have a beer, have a conversation, and feel comfortable. Cool. Yeah. All right, so what's next? So next is Dub C. So this is kind of a classic pale. Cheers. So in homage to Sierra Nevada Pale, but also to the Dub C. So have a sip and I'll tell you what it is. So hoppy, dry hop with citrus and centennials. And so what we've done with this beer is we made it our house pale and it's only available here in the tap room. We, we tend to try to always come to every recipe that we make with, okay, how do we not just do it incrementally better? How do we do it in incrementally or drastically different? But we also try to do it in a sense of style and taste. So you'll also notice, you know, we don't go totally over the top with anything because we also feel like just like in the we, we pull from the wine industry and kind of how they think too where we want things to have balance and even though we want them to be totally different mm -hmm. a little bit of this and a little bit of that so everything kind of tastes right in your mouth all right so the last one your original, last one so right? the, the kind of beer that started it all mm -hmm. which was a, a, an accident gone well and so i tried to make a beer similar to a belgian beer but i didn't know what i was doing because it was my first batch mm -hmm. and so i I looked on LexisNexis, which may be showing my age a little bit, right? It's before Google, right? right? And uh, it said if you throw champagne in a sweet beer, it'll dry it out and give it some sharpness. So this is a beer that was actually fermented first with a Belgian yeast strain and then finished with a champagne yeast strain. So kind of hints of plum, slightly tart, like a little bit of kiwi, and a touch of spice. Excellent. Thank you. Blaine, this is great. Yeah, it's good to meet you, Brian. Thanks for your time and yeah, your beer. Of course, you got it, bud. All right. Come back. I will. Bring your kids. I will. Have a daddy beer. <laughs> <laughs>